hair is a little bit messy beard is a little bit messy who cares today my video is about shame and i don't have a script for this i'm completely spitballing shame uh i i'm recently become a believer yeah and uh during that process of trying to be a better person you kind of like you know you, when you're trying to do better it, it come you, you naturally like go towards shame it's a natural reaction to making mistakes or doing something wrong and um one of the most beautiful lessons i learned in life and in psychology and then like christianity and, and believing in god is um shame is poisonous and you don't need it and like you know in the religious context in, in the believing context god doesn't want you to feel like I, I, he doesn't want you to feel misplaced shame and i, I would dare say that like he would he would want us to be guided away from shame i don't want to speak for god i don't want to say like i don't want to say that he would like rule out something completely um but like just i, I think shame is gen generally like something which is really misplaced and really just traps us in our wrong wrong behavior in our lies in our um flaws rather than actually helps us um it's something you learn in psychology and Christianity and a lot of things. It's funny how many overlaps there are between Christianity and psychology. So like, I, I guess getting to that as well, like evil, obviously the, like a lot of people, especially non-religious people don't really believe in like this e evil forces. So I'm not, I'm not trying to really get into that, but just as a concept or not, evil wants us to feel shame, deep shame. Like, it wants us to hate ourselves, to feel negatively about ourselves and beat ourselves up. And our minds or society or evil or whatever tricks us into thinking when we do this, when we feel this intense shame, we beat ourselves up, we, we hate on ourselves, that this is productive and this is helping us and we deserve it. And whatever, like, we have a bunch of reasons. I see this in so many people. I've seen it in myself, but, like, really strongly in some people I know. Um... And it's actually like sad to see because you can see it just doesn't help them. Uh, so I guess like shame, really, I've so deeply like learned that if you beat yourself up when you do something wrong, if you feel shame, it kind of just loops you into this negative feedback and it really does not help. I, I also don't want this to be a video coming across as just you shouldn't feel bad if you do something terrible. Like obviously that's not what I'm saying, but I, I guess I'm like, like shame is really only helpful to the extent that it actually makes you um, do better and it makes you stop doing the bad thing. And like, it, it really isn't like anywhere near as help. Like, saying that that's only a tiny bit of shame is needed there like it really isn't helpful i learned so much about psychology and you know like it just shame does not help us it just doesn't like it gets us into a sort of negative loop because even if shame does spur you to change a bit you're kind of fueled by negativity so it just doesn't last like it's kind of like um negative reinforcement for someone else like it, it doesn't it isn't the best way of doing things i would say like th there's there's much better ways to do it and um when we get into shame it's just it's just sticky like we just i can't really properly explain the process but i i just off the top of my head you know what i mean like you you do something wrong you feel bad about it you feel shame and then you kind of feel better about beating yourself up about it and you get like a positive reaction in your brain from being yourself up so like it kind of like you add hate to yourself and then like you you know you think about changing but because you've like kind of a like only been spurred by a bad feeling and then you actually feel positive about like treating yourself badly you you kind of like incentivized to do it again like subconsciously this isn't exactly how it works and it might sound a bit dumb don't underestimate that like when you beat yourself up you're not just like you kind of have to treat yourself like you're someone else you know what i mean like um and hopefully like you know it's good to treat other people good as well but like you, you kind of have to like not hate on yourself i think people think they they can get away with hating themselves because they're them and obviously you can do it but it's not good for you and it, it won't help you change in a good way um you don't want to like brag when you do something bad you don't want to feel like amazing about it you know what i mean but 
what you do want to do is kind of just not waste time with all these like stupid negative emotions and just kind of breathe and think about well okay how am I actually going to do better like if I take this seriously how am I actually going to stop this from happening again um and whatever like if, if you treat yourself with a bit of compassion and a bit of love I think you appreciate that like our body is weird like we do have relationships with our self in a way so like genuine pure compassion honest with yourself it is so much better than feeling shameful you just don't need to feel shameful and yeah you do have to be honest with yourself because obviously like some people as well like you know it's kind of like you do something wrong and then just after you like you know you act a certain way and then when it actually comes to doing it you do it again you kind of just have to address why you're actually doing it and um actually discourage like overthinking about your own behaviors and like getting into loops um the biggest takeaway really is don't be horrible to yourself don't treat yourself deep shame super deep condemnation that's just poison and, and it's the same with others like you don't want to do that to others you don't want to shame them you don't want to heavily judge them heavily condemn them that's what jesus says judge and you will be the, the same measure of judgment will be used onto you it's such a real concept on every level religious spiritual psychological divine everything practical like it, it, it really is and it's the same you want to do the opposite you want to forgive others you want to have mercy on others you want to love others and you want to love yourself and forgive yourself and if you're doing that like genuinely genuineness truth behind it like you 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 everything works better as opposed to just acting in darkness to yourself or others you just want to act in love and goodness and just imagine it like darkness something dark happens to you, to you or you do something dark and you react in a negative way to yourself and then you like feel negative and you're you're just dealing in negativity and it may sound like stupid uh but it's real and i, I don't want to explain like why it, why it is real but there's a lot of psychology and s spirituality behind it and it's just practical like think about it like i think a lot of people when they feel good about themselves they naturally treat other people better and when you feel bad about yourselves you treat people worse. It makes you see the world in a negative lens and it makes you see yourself in actions in a negative lens. How you believe you're going to be, the sort of confidence you have in yourself determines the decisions you make. If you're constantly in shame, then you, you kind of like see the action and you lean towards the negative option because you'll kind of associate that with what you're like and what you do. And it's a real thing. I'm not just making it up. Um, so if you see yourself positively, you make better decisions and you act out of love and in a sort of decision in front of you you'll make choices which kind of match with you off the top of my head i don't know why that is but it, it's true and once you do that obviously if you make a positive decision positive things come of that and if you make a negative thing negative things come of that and then that gets you into a cycle it's crazy how these things work and um the funny thing about all these concepts is like like the more you get into psychology and uh, just all of this, uh, you realize there's some really key patterns with like deep concepts like positivity, negativity, lies, truth, deception. Like that was actually one of the things because I used to not believe in God and now I do. And it wasn't the only thing, but just learning about how psychology aligned with the teachings of the Bible and Jesus and God was like, wow, th this isn't just like, this isn't just one of those stupid coincidences, like, you know what I mean? It isn't just really obvious, like, this is deep, like, this is deep. Um, so I definitely, like, definitely invite you to think about that stuff and explore, explore the idea of God and God's way. It's your choice, of course, but it is a beautiful, like, transforms you in an amazing way. And it's not like this scary thing that a lot of people think it is, like, it is real. Um, we have like a lot of internalized negativity towards that, I, I think. Like, I, I had that. And if you want to do that, um, there's the book of Matthew. It explains the whole story of Jesus. And actually, like, it, it takes not much time at all to read. Like, uh, you could do it in a day if you wanted to. Like, it's 28 chapters, and each chapter probably takes like three to five minutes to read, more or less. You know, it really is like when if you read that, you, you've kind of like it covers the whole story and teachings of jesus i recommend it even for any atheist who's remotely interested in anything of that area any any anything like morality truth or actually god and the idea of this like take it from me you should you should you should um but obviously it's your choice and then um 
yeah, you know, as well, if you want to get into that, then, you know, pray to God. It's that simple. Like, God, God is open to people seeking him. It says, seek and you will find. So if you pray to God, know that, like, if you have no background in it, you may not be on the exact right footing or you may not have the exact perspective, but he will hear you and he will love if you, um, you know, turn to him or come to him with good intentions. So I say that sincerely, like, I'm not, I'm not making it up. Like, uh, I, I'm pretty confident in things I've seen and experienced and learned about that this is no delusion, no fairy tale, and it's real. And, um, you know, you, c you can only really take my word for that or explore it yourself. And um, that is exactly it. Like, you know, are you gonna, are you going to listen to me or are you going to listen to anyone or anyone who disagrees with it, anyone who thinks it's stupid? Like, but explore it for yourself. That is the best advice I can give anyone. Like, if you sincerely explore it, it will come back at you. Seek and you will find. Ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will open. It's your choice. When Jesus died on the cross and he was raised again on the third day, he, he like, our, our shame and our, our, like, our sin kind of died with it, but with the fact that we have to accept that for that to happen in us. For that, like, for that life and love for ourselves. Death of our sins and death of our shame. So, hopefully I've explained that alright. But if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. And, um, lads, enjoy the video. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed. God bless.